Hello, my name is Fred Gago, and I'm here to talk about creating interesting compositions in the art we make using Autodesk Sketchbook Pro number 6. I'm using a Mac to run Sketchbook Pro, so when I refer to the keyboard commands, I'll be saying command and the key, but if you're on a PC, then just replace command with the control key. We're going to learn about creating visually appealing compositions by using some fundamental design techniques and a variety of Sketchbook Pro's tools to illustrate a graphic of an animal in this case a stork in a poster style layout. I'm going to start by holding down the shift key and zooming out of my composition by dragging from the center towards the left. Now before we start making our picture we have to consider its composition. What orientation will it be? Will our picture be a horizontal portrait or a vertical landscape? I've decided that I want to make it a vertical landscape. So I'm going to go to the top and hit image and I'm going to rotate my image counterclockwise. Since the canvas is black blank it doesn't matter which direction you rotate it in. Now I'm going to zoom out and place my canvas in the center. Before I start to draw I'm going to create a guide that will help me with my composition based on the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a basic principle in art, and we're going to use it to help us place important objects on the canvas. To begin, I'm going to use my chisel tip marker, and I'm going to select my line option. If you go to the top of the canvas, you'll notice by default you're, you're on the freehand tool. Two icons over is the line tool, and when we click and drag, we can use it to create a line. Now, I'm doing this by eye. Hold shift when you drag to make a perfectly straight line. And I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to select another color using my short color wheel here in the lagoon at the bottom left. And I'll pick something like green. Make sure to deselect your line tool and go back to freehand. And I'm going to call out where the lines intersect. We want to position all of our important objects in the il illustration that we make within these areas. We want to avoid placing our most important objects right in the dead center of the canvas. To create a visually ap appealing illustration or graphic, we should consider these points of interest. There's a variety of different layouts that you can use that will use one or all of these sections. You don't have to use any more than one. or you can use them all. I'm going to open my layers palette by clicking on the layers icon at the top of the screen and I'm going to rename this layer grid. I can rename it by clicking on my layer and dragging to the right. I'm going to keep this visible for a while but I'm going to lower the opacity by dragging here in the layer icon, this slider, this vertical slider, and I'm going to drag it down until about 10%. I'm going to create a new layer with the plus icon here at the top of the layers palette. I'm also going to change my brush to my felt tip pen, which is located on the right hand side of my toolbar on the left hand side of the screen. And I'm going to double click it so that I open up my brush properties window. I'm also going to go back to my color wheel here and select black. I like to open my brush properties window so that I can visibly see my brush size changing when I either A use the sliders or use the brackets on the keyboard left and right to size up your brush. I'm also going to 
lower my opacity just a bit at this top opacity option here just so that it trails off as I draw. Now, using my, my grid here, and to undo any unwanted lines, hit Command Z on the keyboard, Control Z if you have a PC. And I'm gonna gesture my stork. My stork is my subject matter today. And by gesture, I mean I'm just loosely going to draw uh, its shape and figure out what kind of rhythms and motions that I want to use in my composition. I also want to consider things like balance and unity. And unity means that all the pieces of my uh, picture that I put together here all work together and don't really fight against each other. And balance means that there's no one object that's overpowering the rest. I'm just being very loose and fast. I'm trying to use very long broad strokes. And I decided to use a stork today because of its graphic, graphic nature because it has a very large section of its body, most of its body that is white, and then some smaller sections that are black with just a touch of orange. So I think that'll make for a nice poster today. And I'm not worried about making this perfectly anatomically correct because this is going to be a stylized illustration. I'm not worried too much about the feet because I think that I'm going to scale this bird up so that we make our, our focal point more about his head. Um, I think the the, the legs aren't important for my particular goal. Or maybe I'll keep them. Right now they're working for me, so I'm not in a rush to get rid of them. Okay, so this is my sketch for my stork. I'm going to take this and lower the opacity again by using the slider in the layer icon. And I'm going to trace this on a new layer by going back to my chisel tip marker or pen. And now I'm going to go over my drawing with some very clean lines as clean as I can get them. And I will go back and clean up just a little bit. If you want to redo something, if you've undo, undone your drawing too far, you can hit Command Shift Z on the keyboard and it'll add the last, last mark that you made. Undo and redo can also be found in the lagoon. Here are these two arrows. Red means undo, and when you undo, it'll give you the redo option. I'm adjusting my brush size with the brackets when I need to so that I can get a little more precision. And I'm considering the flow and the rhythm of my graphic. So I know I want this to be kind of elegant, so I'm making these long swoopy lines and not too stiff.
And when you're drawing, try to make sure that the lines are connected. Um, if you have a lot of open gaps, a little later on I'm going to show you how to use the flood tool and it won't work quite as well if you have open lines because you'll flood the, uh, the entire image with color when we use that. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes. And if you're not sure if you missed a spot, you can turn off your layer by hitting the eyeball icon on your layer. And I'm going to turn off my sketch layer so that I can get a good look at my clean line art here. And here I'll, I'll brush my, I'll adjust my brush size as I need to, and adjust the quality of my line and add line weight where I feel it's too thin. And I'll also use my hard eraser tool here found on the left hand side of the toolbar and adjust the size as I need to with the brackets and get rid of any unwanted lines. I can also hold down the space bar and zoom to the right. Click hold and zoom to the right so that I can zoom in and clean up some of this, these areas. I want this to look pretty sharp. And if I want to toggle between my last two uh, tools, which I know were my chisel tip marker and my eraser, I can hit the S key on the keyboard and it'll go right to the last tool that you used. Just be mindful that if you switch tools, it'll use that last set of tools. And I think all of this area will be silhouetted black. So I'm going to go in and just clean up some of this. And this is our clean illustration of our swan. And sometimes you might hit a key by accident, like I just hit the E key, which opens up our protractor. And if you do something like this, just hit the key again, and it'll close it. I hold spacebar to zoom out and reposition my canvas. And now, I'm going to start adding some color to this. I'm going to use my flood tool here and found right underneath my hard eraser. And I'm going to open up my colors editor palette found here at the top of our toolbar, at the top of the canvas. And mine opens up in the HSB sliders if you find yourself in the color wheel or the crayons, just move on to the HSB sliders. If you're in the sliders, there are four options. So make sure you're in HSB, which means hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm going to, first, since I already have black selected, I'm going to fill in the area I want black, which is this wing. And I'm going to go in with my chisel tip brush because I did notice did notice that I had one open line here and I want to close that because when I select my flood tool again I'm going to go back into my color palette and I'm going to slide my brightness which is essentially my value and pick a nice orange for my beak and you can just adjust these sliders until you find what you're looking for hue is the actual color and saturation is how vivid it is And don't forget to fill in the body white as well. And this is our stork. I'm going to click on the layer 
click and drag to the right to rename the layer, store it. Now I want to make this into a full out poster. I'm going to make the background a color, add a graphical element, and maybe some copy. I'm going to add a new layer, and I'm going to set it behind my stork, and I can do that by clicking on the top right of my layer. There's an, uh, an icon with two arrows on top of each other, and you can just drag it to where you want it inside, the inside of the layer palette. I'm going to pick a deep red, and I'm going to use my flood tool to flood the background. Now this is a little too saturated, so I'm going to adjust my brightness and my saturation. And find, find again what I call balance. Now you have to balance the colors because if you noticed before, when I was at a bright red, against the white, it, the, the overall image becomes unbalanced. But now that we have what we call contrast, a nice dark against the white, it adds balance to the piece. And I like this. And because my, um, my Stork still had a couple of transparent areas, like piece of the foot and the eyeball, I'm going to go back into the Stork. I'm going to go with my felt pen. I'm going to adjust my opacity so that it's at one and I'm going to zoom in with the space bar open the puck adjust my color I'll find since I'm using white I'll just find it on the in the lagoon adjust my brush size with the bracket and just fill in this area I'll also use my option key to turn on my color picker you'll see my cursor become uh, that into this dropper and then I can just click to select the color. And I'll get here into my toes. And fill in some of this area. And just clean it up just a bit. Be careful when holding the space bar. You might actually zoom out too much. And if you do, just adjust your screen with the space bar again. And I like where this is going. I'm going to add a, a, another layer in between our background and our, our stork. And before I do that, I'm going to rename my color layer background. Hitting OK. And I'm going to add a visual element here. Let me close my brush properties for now. And by clicking on this icon in the top right of the toolbar, I get access to all of Sketchbook Pro's brushes. I want to scroll all the way to the bottom and use some of these graphic brushes that they have. And I'm going to try this splatter brush. I'm also going to use my color picker by holding that option and hitting black. I'm going to add this new layer that I mentioned earlier. And you can see just by placing the cursor on the screen that this, in, this brush is going to paint with this paint splatter effect, which I think will be a nice contrast uh, to our to our uh, swan, our uh, stork. So the brush doesn't get very big. So I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure and make one solid graphic here. I'm going to use my move and transform uh, puck by holding down the V key and dragging out from the center so that I can scale it uniformly and then just drag it to where I want it to be. And then I'll add a little more detail by just painting back into it with the smaller brush.
I'm also trying to find balance again because my image was getting, uh, all of my focus was falling on the head, which is fine, but I felt like my the bottom left was uh, not getting enough attention, and I want I don't want what what's happening up top to take away from the bottom of my image as well.